think we'll leave one reef in, just in case it is windy out there. Clear. since we were offshore sailing but we both feel ready to set off. I've got mixed feelings about leaving French Polynesia though, it's been the best place we've been on of our trip so far. The wind yesterday was much more than forecast so I'm feeling a bit nervous about what to expect out here. It looks good now um, but this passage is a bit notorious for squalls and unsettled weather. We're expecting four and a half metre waves for the start of the passage, although this should come down after a day or two. It's 690 miles from Bora Bora to Sawaru. The island is part of the Cook Islands, but designated as a nature reserve with only two residents, the rangers, who live there for six months of the year. We chose Sawari for two reasons. One, we like the idea of visiting a remote nature reserve, and two, the weather looks much better for the passage to Sawari than to any of the more southern Cook Islands. So the wind's dropped off and we're not going to make it to Sawaru in time to get in through the pass before it gets too dark for us this evening. So we need to slow down so that we'll arrive tomorrow morning now. But it's a glorious day out here and it's flipping hot. So I think we'll take advantage of the time. Then we're going to stop the boat and go for a swim. Oh, we should do that more often. That's brilliant. Refreshed, we drifted on in the light conditions towards Suwari. We were still too early, so we hove to again in the night. 10 miles from the charted position of the island to await daylight for our approach. We don't like being closer than 10 miles to land at night, especially when we don't completely trust the charts. Just after dawn, we set sail once more, timing our approach to give good overhead light to see any obstructions in the pass. We drop the mainsail and approach the pass under a reefed headsail. We would be sailing downwind and have to jibe around a bend halfway through the pass. 
By just using the head sail, we can easily furl it if we need to slow down or stop, so we have more control. As usual for reef passers, I look for coral bommies and shallow spots from the bow, whilst Matt calls out depths from the helm. On the passage here, we noticed a couple of wear points on the mainsail, as well as one of the mast slides pulling out of the sail, so it's out with a needle and thread to fix it before it gets any worse. There's no one out here to help you fix your sails, and stitching by hand is pretty time consuming, but it's pretty satisfying when you manage to fix them yourself. All the yachts are getting together for a potluck ashore tonight, so whilst Matt does some maintenance, I'd better get on with making something to take along. Fresh baked cheese rolls and olive rolls. When you live on a boat, you're always constrained by the weather, even when you're at anchor. The plan was for everybody to go ashore and meet up for a meal this afternoon, but with the waves in the anchorage such as they are, I'm not sure getting into our little tender, even for the short distance to shore, is a good idea. So we'll have to see if it calms down. If not, we've got a lot of bread to eat. Yeah. The weather did not improve, so by mutual consent the fleet postponed the meal until the following day. Nobody got much sleep as everybody was out checking their anchors through the night. Finally, we all made it ashore for the postponed potluck meal. It's great to meet up with everybody like this. We all have so much in common and also so much information to share about where we're going next and where we've been already. After dinner, a friendly game of beach football was started, but there was a lot of over-enthusiasm on a pitch strewn with lumps of coral, so that was abandoned at half-time in favour of a more sedate but no less competitive ball competition. Then, after dark, we met one of the local inhabitants, this massive coconut crab. Hello. <laughs> These crabs are the largest land crabs in the world, often with leg spans of three feet. All in all, a very enjoyable evening. With the comparatively calm weather, we decided to explore the island. The boobies that nest here don't see many human visitors, so they're not afraid. In fact, they're almost as curious about us as we are about them. When we look at them, they stare right back. The remoteness of the island has attracted a few people to try and live here in the past. There's a statue to the most well-known of these, Tom Neal. In all, he spent over 15 years intermittently living here alone between 1952 and 1977. He wrote a book about his adventure called An Island to Oneself. Another famous visitor, perhaps closer to us, was Bernard Montissier who met Tom Neal here. Montezier is a famous French solo sailor with a strange claim to fame. During the first around the world solo race, when he had already completed one lap of the world, he was heading for the finish line and decided that instead of completing the race, he'd carry on for another lap into the Pacific. 
Now there's a thought. We really enjoyed seeing the manta rays back on Bora Bora and there's supposed to be a manta cleaning station here which is shallower so we can see the rays up close. So we made the very wet and bumpy dinghy ride out into the lagoon to have a look. favourite bit about staying here has to be the manta rays, far and above. We've seen them before but the water here is so clear and you can get so close to them, they're just majestic. From here we're heading to Samoa, it used to be known as Western Samoa, it's about 500 miles away. It's been really windy since we got here and it doesn't look like it's going to drop off so it might be quite a rough passage. We could just stay a bit longer. <laughs> we could do. And then the wind will die to nothing and it will take us forever to get to some out. That was a lot harder getting the anchor up than we thought. It was tangled around about three or four bits of coral. I managed to swim down and untangle it from one but we really needed an extra person and we were really grateful that Neil from Silver Lining came across his dinghy and jumped in the water and helped us untangle it. Thankfully, we anchored somewhere shallow enough we could get down to it and pull it off from where it was tangled around the coral. Not too little, not too much. The wind's been whistling through the anchorage for the last couple of days, so I thought it was gonna be a lot worse out here than it actually is. Gorgeous sailing conditions. What just happened? I'm feeling this. Landon, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. Next time, we continue our sail to Samoa to explore and to experience the fire dancing that we first got a taste of in Tahiti. <laughs>